Jasmine, thanks for being with us today. Uh, do you want to start off by just telling us how you got involved with MIR and introduce your blog? I'm a U3 student at McGill, and my article, my sorry, my blog, Protesting the Powerful, was something that I did while I was uh, living and studying on exchange in Istanbul, Turkey. It's something that I really wanted to do because I found on MIR that there there was an opportunity for me to explore the political um, the political content that's an art, especially in a country with so much political tension as Turkey. And how did you get involved in MIR? I got involved in MIR three years ago. It was back, well, it goes all the way back to U0 when you told me about, yeah, you, you told me about MIR back in its smaller days. And back then I was writing for other um, McGill publications. And it wasn't until you won that I joined MIR because I found that with the other publications I wasn't growing in the way that I wanted to, um, that would contribute to my professional career as a journalist later in life. And with MIR, I really found that. I really found through the editors and the flexibility that they gave me with my writing that I was really progressing in a way that um, I saw fruitful for my future. Um, over the course of your experiences and your semester in, in Istanbul, how did sort of the progression of your blog change over time? Was the original idea that you set out for with this blog, was that, uh, did you find yourself adapting it to the experiences you were having there and changing some of your original perceptions around political art in Turkey? The main thing that changed going into it was the fact that coming to Turkey, I knew really not a lot about the political issues. I knew just vague things like the issues between Erdo issues with Erdogan and his stances, his problematic stances, and just vague, very, very vaguely about Kurdish-Turkish issues. Um, and I found that going to Turkey and going to Boazici University and taking political science courses there, I really did learn a lot more about the, the situation there. And that really helped contextualize the art that I was looking at and that I was studying and I was writing about. So I definitely felt more comfortable making the criticisms or statements that I did when I was writing. Did you encounter any sort of pushback from those articles? One minor incident that occurred uh, was a friend who didn't particularly agree with one of my articles when I said that uh, the Istanbul Biennale that I went to, um, an art exhibition in Istanbul, uh, she didn't agree with what I said about there not being any Turkish artists who were critical, who made artwork that was critical of the Turkish regime. Uh, she didn't particularly agree with me because um, she said that, oh, the topic wasn't um, couldn't be made political, which I disagreed with her. Um, but I think that a part of that is due to the culture in which she grew up in, or perhaps just, um, or maybe there is, there is uh, she is correct in some ways, but I do think that the curators pur purposely chose artworks that weren't particularly risky. I think that there is still so much growth and potential for political art in Turkey. For example, there's a, there's a Kurdish woman who I believe is still in jail. I wrote about her work. Um, I forget her name at the moment, unfortunately, but she managed to continue to create artwork after she was put in prison and somehow smuggle that artwork out and make it into the world. So I do believe that no matter how repressed and how um, and how banished, I suppose, political, uh, politically critical artwork is from mainstream channels. There are always other ways for, for rebellious voices to, to come out. Was that your favorite blog post, or do you have another one in particular that probably was your favorite to write? The short review that I did on um, a short film made by a Boazici student or a Boazici alum on a short film about a Syrian child who was a refugee. And although I did have some criticisms for that piece, I think, I think it 
brings awareness of the emotional trauma and the actual suffering behind mm -hmm. something like the Syrian civil war and the refugee crisis. That's more than just numbers and data that we see on screen. Branching off the direct topic of your blog, what do you think is the aspect of Istanbul that you connect with on a personal level the most? Well, I, it, it was two years in the making that I wanted to go to Istanbul. That was something that I wanted to do for a very long time because uh, prior to I didn't have much travel experience and then and I wanted my first exchange experience to be somewhere where I thought I had a lot of potential to grow as a journalist, to improve as a writer and a photographer. And I think that going to Istanbul, which is known as a beautiful metropolis, um, kind of cliche, but where East meets West, and somewhere very, very different from any of the places that I've been to. And I not only wanted to just go there to experience a beautiful city, but I also wanted, when I go somewhere, I want to see both the dark and the beautiful sides. I don't, I don't just want to go and see through rose-tinted lenses, but I think that one thing that will bring me back to Turkey or to Istanbul is how I learn about human suffering and that human suffering is timeless. And that's something that I wish I'd been able to do more research and writing about, but human suffering is something that I really came to understand when I was in Istanbul through um, learning more about the, especially the refugee crisis um, with Syrians in Turkey. Um, and, knowing, and knowing someone who uh, who left Syria at a young age, but also just having a very influential professor um, who who helped teach me and helped me learn about things like that, not just learn about suffering, but to also internalize it. Is this somewhere you can see yourself working professionally in the future? Yeah, definitely. Um, it's maybe not for a while. I mean, if I if I do get an offer, I will not say no. Mm. It's an amazing city to work in. It's not, it wouldn't be easy. Uh, there's, there's definitely a level of discomfort that I always feel walking down the street in Istanbul. This is due to my race, due to my, due to my gender. Uh, that will, in my lifetime, never cease. But I think that working in Istanbul would be so fruitful. Well, thanks again for being with us here today.